the time is now. We are finally here. It's 12 noon and I am super duper excited because it's time to talk about my new book that I'm really excited about. So, as you guys know, I am Dr. Dawn, Chicago's own board certified OBGYN. My mission is to empower women of all ages with pertinent medical knowledge and proactive sexual education that will optimize women's physical and mental health, thereby strengthening their self-esteem and motivating them to achieve more for themselves. So, that mission has really pushed me to do a little bit more than just taking care of my patients in the office, taking care of my patients in the hospital. I want to do more for my patients. And so I was motivated to write this book. This book here is called The Clever Girl Life. It is a teen guide to positive body image, self-confidence, and life happiness. And it is the result of the experiences that I've had with my patients, my young girls, my teens, my young women. Hey, Dr. Dre. Hey, Regina. Thanks for joining. Um, this book is a result of over 14 years of experience that I've had as an OBGYN. I worked throughout the country, different places outside and inside of Chicago, suburbs, inner city, worked with all socioeconomic, all races. And what I've learned is women basically need the same things and they're asking the same questions. So my book is here. Hey, Dr. Jerisa. Hey, Dr. Michelle. My book is here to answer those questions. And all the questions that I have come in contact with over the years, I tried to answer them with this book. So let's kind of go through the history of who I am and how this book came about. And you all know, I keep my notes on board, right? Thank you. Thank you. I keep my book, my notes on board because I want to make sure I cover everything and I get to talking, and I'll forget something. So I don't want to forget anything. So first of all, who am I? I'm Dr. Dawn, boy certified OBGYN. I'm born and raised here in Chicago. I was born on the south side by Pat and Ethel Collier. Hey, Dr. Haley, hey, Dr. Lowe. Um, born here on the south side, worked to public schools, went to one of the top schools in, uh, in Chicago, St. Ignatius went to Northwestern and then got and went to the Ohio State University College of Medicine. And, and there I really met, met some cool people, some good doctors that I've come in contact with throughout the years. So after med school is of course residency. And um, while you're in med school is that's when you kind of decide what you, you want your specialty to be. Hey, Dr. Lowe, thank you. Um, and for me, I kind of always knew I was going to be an OBGYN. That, that's what I knew. Um, you go through all the specialties, and um, I knew right from the jump that I was going to be an OBGYN. What's cool and what I didn't know at the time, even when I got into residency and an OBGYN residency, is that my great-grandmother was a midwife. Had no idea. Didn't get that information until I was well into residency. But my great-grandmother was a midwife, and she had a town city that she probably delivered the majority of the people there, which was really interesting to find out. So I was, did my residency at Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit, Michigan, and it turns out that my great-grandmother, the town that she kind of founded because she delivered all the babies, right outside of Detroit. Now, how does that happen? I don't know. That's divine intervention. But what's cool about that is that it just lets me know that I've been on this path and this path was divinely ordained and so I'm just going to stay on the path because I know that's where I'm supposed to, supposed to be. Dr. Tamika, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. So um, right out of residency, uh, my mom asked me to take my grandmother and to visit her sister. Hey, Aunt H. Anthony, how you doing? Hey, Simone, thank you so much. Thanks for joining. So my mom, soon after I came out of residency, asked me to take my grandmother to visit her sister. And her sister uh, lived right out of Detroit. And that's when I found and met all my family and realized that my great-grandmother had delivered the majority of them. So that's where this, this, this started. So I brought up briefly my grandmother. My grandmother was in Mississippi. And she ended up having six kids. And um, while she was there in Mississippi, just doing the things that we do in Mississippi as black women, 
she decided that, hey, I don't want my kids growing up in Mississippi. I want them to be able to go to school and do b bigger and better things. So my grandmother and my granddad, my granddad came and they were a part of this great migration. And um, in, the, in, in their decision, my, great -grand my granddad came up, my mother came up, uh, my grandmother came up soon after. She came on the train. She came with my aunt who was two years old and my mom who was an arm baby two months on on the train from Mississippi to Chicago. Why? Because she wanted to make sure her kids were educated and she knew that the schools at, up at the north were going to educate her kids the way that she wanted them to be. So that, that's my legacy and my goal is to make sure that her train ride was not in vain. That's, that's my goal. Once I found that out, I know how long a drive it is just driving. And so just imagine that you were on the train, probably at the back of the train, because you knew back in the day that's how they did. She had her babies, and she, she made sure that uh, she came here because she wanted her kids to be educated. So that's, that's part of my legacy. Um, on my dad's side, my great-grandfather was a sharecropper, which is what we typically saw. He was a sharecropper. He was real smart. He was really had a good business mind. So he grew up, got higher and higher and higher, and eventually he was going to be the head sharecropper. Okay, this is in Mississippi though. So one night, one somebody, non-black, took him aside and said, "You know what? You need to leave, and you need to leave soon." Because they're not going to let a black man be a sharecropper here and a head sharecropper at that. And if you don't leave, you'll be in jeopardy and you know what that means. You'll be kind of strung up on some tree somewhere. So my granddad had to leave Mississippi. At that point, he had made a lot of money. So he again also migrated here to Chicago. And he was the first, one of the first um, businesses here in the south side of Chicago. He had a general store. Uh, here on the south side of Chicago, close to where I am now, and he ran that store for a long time. So I have a legacy on both of my mom and my dad's side of not just medicine, but business-minded. So when I hear those stories, that lets me know that I'm on the right path. So fast forward, mom and my aunt are here. They had a family of six. Uh, she had four other brothers. They didn't have a lot of money, so my mom and my aunt made a pack. My aunt went to school and um, my aunt went to work and put my mother through school, college. And then when my mom got out of school, got out of college, she went to work and put my aunt through college. So they both were uh, college educated women because they kept that legacy going that my grandmother had started. So um, that just lets you guys know that I really believe in education because that's my legacy. Um, and that's why I have this book here. This book is a result of me sharing the knowledge that I have and passing it on to all the ladies that come in my contact. And I know that I can reach more women with a book, with my online um, stories. So that's why I do what I do. Uh, because of my legacy and that's why I think it's important for us to know our legacy so we realize that we are here for a higher purpose so I'm gonna go back to my notes because I want to make sure I talked about my grandmother my great-grandmother I talked about basically a little bit more about why I'm writing this book I write I'm writing this book because um, there was hey Dale thank you for, for buying for joining me and buying the book, spread the word, Mishikas. Um, so I'm writing this book because I've been doing this as a full-time doc since 2003, so over 14 years as an OBGYN, delivering babies, doing surgery, and really just talking to my patients in the off office. And um, a lot of times you're just kind of ministering to the spirit of the women that come into the office to talk to you. And what I found is if there's a problem at home, or if there's a problem, an issue that they're dealing with, that often manifests into a physical ailment. Um, the two are often connected. So when we're super stressed and we got a lot going on, a lot of times we have a, an illness that will correlate. And, I, I, and sometimes I think it's because we have to learn how to pay attention to ourselves and, and nurture ourselves. And as women, we don't always do that. So I think 
part of the reason I'm writing this book is to help young girls learn how to nurture themselves and be, feel good about themselves from the beginning because how you feel about yourself is really going to dictate the decisions you make and your path in the future. And it's really important that we let our young girls know, hey, you're worthy, you're smart, you can do whatever you want to do. But they have to know that at 8, 9, 10. They have to know that before high school, while they're in high school. Uh, as you all know, I'm from Chicago, and so we have a lot of headlines that are out. And we know that there are a lot of things that are going on that can be difficult for young girls and guys to really um, deal with. And so my goal is to help these people uh, learn how to deal with being a young girl and the decisions that they have to make. Hey, Pat Collier. Thanks for joining me, big brother. Hey, Valencia. Thanks for joining. Hey, Cheryl. Thanks for joining. I am going to be on for the next 45 minutes because I want to talk to you all about this book. I uh, know that our money is hard to come by at times, so I'm, I want you to know that this is definitely a good buy. So uh, if you are paying attention, and I'm on the Facebook Live, and what I put is a link to download the book. The book right now is an ebook, and it's for three bucks. So if you uh, go to the look, uh, the uh, link, it's http semicolon forward slash forward slash uh, bit dot ly forward slash dr. Dawn, and that's D R D A W N E. So just hit that link. It's going to take you right to where you can download the book and buy the book. It's only three bucks, so hopefully that'll be good. I'm going to have this print copy probably in the next two weeks, so I'll have that available on my website. So back to uh, my spiel. So um, I was writing this book because I think we have to. We have to give knowledge to our young people because they, they have a lot they're dealing with. So we want to make sure that they uh, have the knowledge they need to make the right decisions. So... Um, the book is a teen guide to positive body image, self-confidence, and life happiness. So what I'd like to do is uh, kind of go through what I have put in the chapters. We'll go through the chapters uh, so you know what you're getting. And what I like about this book is this book is not that big. It's a real easy read. Uh, it's an easy read because I want my girls, my mom, to be able to sit, read it in one sitting. And then this book is what is a book that we discuss. It's not a book that you read and put on the shelf. It's a book with a lot of information in it and things that we all need to discuss with each other, with our young girls, if you're buying them for your daughter or for your niece, for your young cousin or any person that's young that's in your life and you want them to have the knowledge that they need, then, then this is a book that you buy so we have those discussions. Uh, because just like I'm passing on this information, the young girls in your life are looking up to you, and if you can have a conversation with them, they're going to have more knowledge, and they'll take it to heart. So the first chapter I have is a chapter on puberty, and that's basically uh, telling our, our young girls what to expect, what's going on with your body, what to expect, what's changing. Um, and I really discuss it for you girls and guys because we're all connected. So if girls know what's going on with the guys, it benefits them and vice versa. Guys know what's going on with the girls, especially dads. They want to know what's going on with their daughters. This book will help you with that. So I go through the stages of puberty, what to expect, not just the physical changes, but some of the emotional changes that our young girls will go through. And it's, it's good to know that information so you know what to anticipate so that uh, when you see it happening, you can support your, your young girl in that uh, when she's going through. Um, the second chapter is basically anatomy of women and men. I, I'm act often surprised at how many young girls know, uh, they don't know their body parts, they don't know the correct names, uh, and they don't even know kind of how it looks down there. Uh, you should be able to get a mirror and know what you look like, but a lot of ladies don't do that. So I have uh, pictures here that, you know, show us what we look like on the inside and on the outside. And I have men and women body parts because we all kind of need to know what's happening. It's your body. You should know about it. So I have um, the anatomy that I'm going through to help ladies know what's happening. All right. Now the third chapter is... Is something I really am um, 
really happy to just start discussing because it's not something we really discuss. Hey, Tal, well, thanks for joining. Um, that is that of body image. Um, and it's really important for us to talk about body image because we need our young girls to know what's going on and to be proud of their bodies. Um, the media, social media, television, movies, they often have a certain body type that's out there, a certain look of a woman that, that's out there. And if you soak up what media is telling us, it lets us know that this small, finite image of what a woman is is what's beautiful, and that's it. And that's not true. Um, African Americans and even people who are not of color, they often are really having problems trying to fit into a certain mode that media has put us into. And my goal is to make sure that girls know you are fine just like you are. If you are a little chubby, if you're really a little thin, that's fine. If you have big breasts, no breasts, medium-sized breasts, long legs, short legs, we have to be comfortable with ourselves just how we are. We are made that way, and we were made that way on purpose. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't try to improve some things that we can improve. You know, if you want to lose 15, 20 pounds, and you're doing it in a safe manner, and you're getting yourself healthy in the meantime, that's great. I'm not talking about that. But I have women or young girls that come in, and they're 17 years old, and they want a breast augmentation or they're looking at their body parts down below and they want them augmented. They want labia changes. And to me, my opinion only, I think that's a little excessive at 12, 17, 19 years old. Definitely is your body, but I think that's a result of having so many messages that tell us that our, our bodies the way they are, they're not correct. Something's wrong with them. And the problem is, the reason why the message is out there is strictly money. They want you to buy a product. They want you to get surgery or get something that's going to plump up or decrease or whatever it is they're trying to sell. So they're using women and the insecurities that women have to sell a product. And they've been doing that since the beginning of time. So my goal is to make sure we learn how to accept ourselves the way we are so that we're not a tool for a business to make money off of us. And it's big business. They make money off of women and the insecurities we have all the time. So my chapter on body image is something that I think is important and is definitely something we need to talk about. The chapter after that is self-confidence and it goes hand in hand. Being confident, being self-aware, being proud of who you are as a young woman. Not placing your value and only on outer images, but placing value in yourself for being able to think, being able to love, being able to care for your family members or your friends. Helping young girls know that you're valuable in who you are and what you do and how you uh, help other people as opposed to focusing on how you look. There's nothing wrong with looking nice. All of us like to look nice, men and women. But we have to learn to find value in ourselves outside of this outer image. Are you taking care of your family member? Do you have a good relationship with your parent? Are you able to have good relationships with your friends? Are you helping when you can help? Not just immediate people in your family family, but in your community. You know, we are not islands on to ourselves. If you have a talent or a skill, then put it to work so that it can help your community at large because we all are connected and we all help and benefit each other. So that's chapter three, body image, and chapter four, self-confidence. Those are really important chapters for me. And if you join my group, my Facebook group, it's a Clever Girl Crew. If you go online, you can just, you know, j join it. I am the head administrator, so I usually, everybody's welcome. But we're going to talk about this book in depth. We're going to talk about the chapters in this book in depth. That way we can entertain questions. What I find is usually if one person has a question, 12 people have a question. And it just is that one person who took it upon themselves to ask a question because they're kind of afraid or what have you. So... 
join my group, my Facebook group, the Clever Girl Crew, because we're going to, once you download this book, we'll go through the book and kind of have discussions about it. So, the uh, fifth ch uh, chapter that I have is a chapter on relationships. Again, everything is, it, it is connected. Everything happens for a reason, and I put them in a certain order because relationships are, are very important and learning how to have healthy relationships. Um, and a lot of times we're talking about romantic relationships, but we are talking about uh, relationships with friends also, you know. Um, we all saw that movie or heard of that movie back in the day, Mean Girls. Well, that was true to form, and that happens. And typically, um, typically it happens right around 9, 10, 11, 12, where girls get in their cliques, and they're, you know, going against each other. And a young girl really has to have a lot of confidence and self-awareness to be able to withstand some of the criticisms that women give other women. We could be the worst to other women than, than some of the things, other things that we see. Um, and we all, I also talk about relationships, romantic relationships. Uh, because if you don't have a good uh thought of yourself, you don't think highly of yourself, if you don't really believe in yourself, you can get into relationships that can be abusive, verbally abusive, physically abusive, emotionally abusive, um, and these relationships can really wreak havoc on uh, the emotional well-being of the women that are in them. So I discuss ways to maintain healthy relationships. Sometimes we need to talk about what a healthy relationship is. If you're in an environment where your family or your, you know, parents are not necessarily in a healthy relationship, you may not know. Hey, Dr. Kendra, thank you so much for downloading the book. Uh, thank you. So um, I talk about what healthy relationships are because sometimes we don't know. If we're brought up into a family unit where the relationships or how we talk to each other or things happen and that's all we know, then we don't know any better. And oftentimes we're just repeating things that we've seen from our caregivers. And, and, and you don't know unless you get out the house and you live on your own, you don't know that that's an abnormal way to interact with each other. So in my book, I really try to discuss what healthy, just basic healthy relationship things that we should know. Um, and I also try to discuss um, what to do if you're not in a healthy relationship. And again, that's why it's really going to be cool to download or get into the Clever Girl Crew uh, because we can talk about those things. And I think when we have a forum, I don't know everything. So a lot of times people that are in the forum with me can also bring up ideas that will help someone else in the forum. So be sure to download the book and join the Clever Girl Crew, the Facebook group. All right. So I'm going to stop again just to let people know if they are just joining in. Dr. Dawn, Chicago Zone Board Certified OBGYN. This is my first my second book, my first book I was in with a lot of other cool people, but this is my first book where I'm the single author. And it's a teen guide to uh, positive body image, self-confidence, and life happiness. Um, so, you can download it from bitlink, uh, http colon forward slash forward slash uh, bit dot ly forward slash drdawne, and that's Dr. Dawn. So, hey, Dr. Donna, thanks for joining, and thank you for downloading the book. Uh, that's the book, and um, I'm going to keep on talking. I'm going to keep on talking. <laughs> so, we stopped with relationships, right? And so the sixth chapter, chapter number six, is basically on sex. Uh, and what it means to be sexually active, the responsibility that goes with it, the emotions that be can be attached with it. Um, I give alternatives for... Um, I give alternatives for abstinence. Sex isn't for everybody, and you might not be ready for that. You might not be at that point in your relationship where you want to start being sexually active. And even if you were sexually active before, you might have a new partner where you don't want to be sexually active right away. So we talk about sex, we talk about the responsibilities that go with it, and we talk about uh, reasons to be abstinent and how you can do that, because that is an option 
that I want young girls to know that that even if you think all your friends are being sexually active, one, that not, might not be the case. Two, you have to be confident enough to say, I'm not ready, I'm going to wait and be okay with that. And if these girls are really your friends, or if this person that you're in the relationship with really cares about you, they'll respect your decision to hold off on sex right away and to do it when you're, when you're ready. And I think that's the best thing uh, for young girls, and that's what I try to impact, uh, impart to them in the book. So that is uh, number, number six with sex. Number seven, the name of that chapter is How Not to Get Pregnant. <laughs> because... At some point, you may act, decide that you are going to be sexually active. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a natural part of life, natural emotions. So we are going to be sexual beings at some point. So in my book, I talk about how not to get pregnant. <laughs> okay? Uh, and in the book, um, How Not to Get Pregnant, I talk about different forms of contraception. So I talk about how to use the contraception, um, if it's a medicine, the side effects, how you take the, the medication, things of that nature. So it's a really good uh, chapter on the contraception options um, and what you can, uh, what you need to know. And um, I want to go back to chapter six because I just realized I skipped some important part. So when we talked about, let's talk about sex. One of the things I want to talk about are sexually transmitted infections because we need to know about that. I have had a lot of different videos in the past uh, couple of weeks and one of them was vaginal discharge. And then in that, in that um, video, we talked about dis different sexually transmit transmitted infections, which, is S which are STIs. But in my book, I go in detail about what they are, what the signs and symptoms are, and what the uh, prescriptions that your doctor, if we can, will give you. Uh, hey Sam, thanks for joining. Um, what we'll do to give you to help treat you with that. Now, like I said in my video though, some infections or, that we pick up, we're not able to treat necessarily. Uh, or we can't treat or cure 100%. So gonorrhea, chlamydia, we can do, we can help you. We can give you some pills, we give you a shot something like herpes, we can give you medicine, but we're not going to be able to get rid of that virus. And so that infection can be recurrent and can come back. Um, things like genital warts, we can give you medicine for it, but you may not be able to get rid of that virus 100%. So again, it can come back. Um, and that's caused by the HPV virus. The HPV virus also we know is a, a culprit for cervical cancer. So when I uh, have my chapter on sex, I'm talking about these STIs and how, um, um, what the repercussions of them if, if you come down with one of them. Hey, Sora Cornelia, thanks for joining. Hey, Auntie Gwen, thanks for joining. So that's in um, chapter six. In chapter sev seven, we talked about how not to get pregnant, different contraceptions. Um, contraceptive options and I also talk about condoms. Condoms are really important. They're male and female condoms. Most of us are familiar with the male condoms. Um, the male condoms are important not just for being able to so that we don't get pregnant but they also can give some form of protection from these sexually transmitted infections. Um, the female condom really didn't take off that well but it is out there and um, the reason it came out is because there's a that uh, is a latex tube that you put inside the vagina and you have an area that comes and covers the labia. And that's important because oftentimes if you are gonna get an infection where it's an ulcer or a lesion like uh, herpes or genital warts, the idea is that this will cover that and protect you from that. So plus or minus, I know not a lot of people use it because it can be a kind of awkward but it is that is one of the benefits of it is it can give you more protection from um, infections that leave a lesion or come back. So I wanted to include that with my uh, in the book. So um, contraception, we talked about the IUD again. I talked about that before in my video. Love it. It's long term contraception. It's something we we place in the office. You can leave it in for 10 years. Uh, you can take it out whenever you want. So the IUD, we talk about the pill, rings, the patch. 
Uh, we talk about implants. So implants go into your arm and they can be left in for about three years. We talk about injectables. Uh, typically, we're giving those every three months. Um, and again, different options that we have so that you uh, don't have to use the excuse of I don't re I can't remember. I, I don't remember pills every day either, so I get you. So we, there are different contraceptive options that are out there that you can use that can help you with that. And the other thing I talk about is spermicide. That's always helpful. Cervical caps. And one thing that I, I mentioned in the book that I want to mention now is the concept of emergency contraception. Hey, Helena, thank you for joining. Um, I talked about emergency contraception. Um, sometimes things happen. Um, you typically are all on top of using contraception, using condoms, but for whatever reasons it didn't happen. So it's important to know about emergency contraception. Usually if you use that within three days of the sexual act that was unprotected, you, you will get a good benefit of it, about 95% but um, even within five days. And this is a medication, it's usually called, it's called Plan B. I think it, right now it's called One Step Plan B because it's one pill. You should be able to get that from your pharmacy. You don't need a prescription for that, which is important to know. But I will have, I usually have people call the pharmacy first because not all pharmacies carry it. So call your pharmacy, let them know you're looking for the uh, emergency contraception, Plan B, the different companies that are out now that have a form of it. Hey, Gene, thanks for joining us. Man, out from across the pond. I don't know if you are still in France or, or in Paris or you're back here, but either way, thank you for joining. Um, but back to emergency contraception. Call your pharmacy before you go up there, uh, but try to do it within three days, no more than five days to try to be uh, effective. So that is emergency contraception, and that's in that chapter on chapter eight. So chapter nine, I think um, we talk about basically your menstrual cycle. Young girls that have a new menstrual cycle, moms that are nervous, dads that are really sweating bullets because their young girl has, now has a menstrual cycle. So I talk about what the menstrual cycle is. Uh, I have kind of a picture again of what happens, what to expect. Um, and I really try to go through what's normal, what's abnormal. And if you, again, looked at some of my videos before I went through the menstrual cycle, typically it takes about a year, year and a half for a young girl's cycles to get regular. Typically, it will come every four weeks, every 28 days, but it may come every 25 days, every 32 days, and that's still normal. Uh, typically, it will, uh, it will occur or you will have a cycle for about three to seven days. That's still normal. That's okay. So uh, I talk about that, and I also talk about things like uh, the menstrual pads, uh, the tampons, and new to me, I'm still learning, and I had a, a cool nurse that I talked to about, there are these period panties that are out. So apparently you just put the underwear on, if you have a flow, it's absor absorptive, so you can use it and change it, wash them or rinse them and wash them, use them again. New concept. I didn't know they didn't have that out back in the day but apparently it's taken off big because a lot of ladies want to be more natural in what they're doing if you like it I love it go ahead so um, though that's an option menstrual cups those are big too because they they're something that you can keep you put that cup right there it collects the blood you take the cup out rinse it out or do what have you put the cup back in and I have friends who use it then and they really like it so the reason I put it in the book is so you know what your options are. So you know what's out there um, and also kind of discuss it. Hey, Shalise, thanks for joining. Um, also kind of to put it out there so people know what's out there. And so you can kind of pick what works well for you. Um, chapter 10 is called, I called it the uh, vaginal, uh, hey, Lauren, I will, we, I'm going to talk to you about that. I, uh, um I called it vaginal rules of engagement and it really is a summary or goes through what I talked about in my last uh, video abnormal vaginal discharge so uh, again through media and different things we have different uh, questions about what's normal what's not normal uh, women need to know that your vaginal discharge is going to change depending on where you are in your menstrual cycle so sometimes it's really thin and watery sometimes it's thicker and it really depends on your menstrual cycle and it's really good to write down where you are in your cycle so you can anticipate what that vaginal discharge will be. So we talked about the uh, vaginal, vaginal discharge, wearing cotton underwear, 
using a, a lubricant with um, with intercourse if you need it. That's kind of what we talked about in that chapter. Okay, so um, chapter eleven is really just that chapter is really my final words of wisdom, and that's the name of it. And that one is a combination of just how to interact with your romantic partner and how to be, you know, the woman that I know you can be. So basic topics we're talking about, don't kiss and tell. Let's not get messy. So we have a lot of shows that are out that are um, put out there now, and I won't name any shows because we like to watch it. It's kind of ratchet television, and it's a guilty pleasure for most of us. But I, I think we really need to think about whether we really want to enact that in our own personal lives. So just basic rules of ethics that I think young girls should know so that we're not looking at these shows and really trying to emulate them. We really need to emulate doing things the right way and behave in a certain way with the people that are in our lives. Whether we have platonic or romantic relationships, trying to be above board and do things the right way. Um, so that's kind of what I talk about. And I also talk about sexual education, I mean, sexual orientation. And for me, I think that whomever you choose to love, you need to be honest with yourself and, and just do you. People that love you, are not necessarily going to make you feel bad about who you love okay and if they do that's a reflection of their concerns and not necessarily that you're a bad person okay so in my book I, I talk about sexual orientation and being confident in who you are no matter what and to go forth in your truth and, and live your truth because it's your truth it's your life you have to go forward and be comfortable with that so I think we really have gone through most of the chapters, all of the chapters in the book. Uh, hopefully it's something that will be beneficial to you, uh, not necessarily to you, but to a young woman, a young girl that's in your life that's coming up. I really tried to write the book for young, young girls, teens, um, teenagers, and right before teens. So the age I'm looking to talk to with this book is probably about... 11, 12, teenagers, high school, uh, because I want them to know this information before they're out there in the real world, like with a job and trying to do things. So that's that's why, I, that's kind of my audience. So again, Dr. Dawn, Chicago's on board, certified OBGYN. My mission is to empower women of all ages with pertinent medical knowledge and proactive sexual, sexual education that will optimize their mental and physical health uh, thereby strengthening their self-esteem and motivating them to achieve more for themselves. Um, this book is my, my, my baby. I'm really proud of it. Uh, so you can download the book now, three bucks. Um, the link is http colon forward slash forward slash bit dot ly forward slash Dr. Dawn. And that's D-R-D-A-W-N-E. Uh, you can go right to that link, and I also have it in my Facebook Live, the little information at the top. Download the book and um, read it. And again, that's just the ebook. We're going to have the print copy available probably in the next week or so. And like I said, this book is not, not that long. Um, I think I have maybe six, 60 pages or so because I wanted it to be an easy read. I want to give you the pertinent information that you need to know and have it so that you can read the book. Talk to your friends about it. Talk to your daughter or your niece or your granddaughter about it. Have a discussion. So again, the other thing that I would like you to do is to um, join my group, Clever Girl Crew, it's a Facebook group. Just join it. I'm the administrator, so I usually admit everybody. <laughs> and and because in the future, in the next week or so, we're gonna start talking about chapters in the book. I'd like you to give me. Uh, what you thought about it if you had any questions and if we want to talk further about certain topics we can so be sure to do that and um, What time is it? I just been running my mouth. It's 1240 <laughs> So hopefully you guys have learned something from the, uh, the chat here um, I, I Have everything posted so hopefully you guys get what you need from it and uh, right now I think what I could do is kind of open it up. I don't know if people are still watching. If the people that are watching have questions, um, I can take some questions now. So 
Let's see. I'm going to scroll through. And if you're watching this, Dr. Dawn, I'm talking about my book. But if you have questions about the book or about some of the videos that I've, I've done, um, let me know. Hey, cousin. Thank you. Please, let's all join this, this uh, the crew. Um, that's my cousin Simone. She has always been in my corner. I'm so uh, happy to have her help me like that. So um, if we don't have any further questions, because it looks like probably the people have either already bought the book or they kind of are no questions at this time, and that's fine, because I'll be back. I'll be back uh, doing a Facebook Live soon. If that's the case, then I'm probably going to sign off. Um, but do me a favor, share this video, tell your friends and family. Even if you don't have kids, you probably know someone, or, or not kids, but have daughters. Uh, you probably, yeah, my colliers have my back. And my do parts too, I can't even lie, but my colliers, y'all doing it. Um, if you know of young girls, if you have a young girl that you know of, a neighbor or a cousin or somebody who, a daughter of somebody you work with, if you have a friend at work who has daughters, buy the book, download the book, tell them about it, share this video with your friends and family. Um, it's You can download it now, but you're going to be able to download it for a while. It's going to be out there. And then let people know that in a week or so, I'm going to have the print copy book available. Um, and that's going to be on my website as well. So share this video, share the news with your friends and family. I am super duper happy to share this book with you guys. Let me know your feedback because um, I plan on doing another book based on this, you know, for girls that are a little older. So those will be for my college 20, early 20 book. Uh, age group that we're gonna, I'm going to do a second book for. So this is just the beginning because I got a lot of knowledge that I want to share with folks. So that's what this is just the beginning. So again, if you guys don't have any questions, if you have questions, just put it in. Um, I'll sit tight for a half a second. If not, I'm going to let you guys get back to work or whatever you're doing. I myself, it's really nice. I'm here in Chicago and I work tomorrow. I'm off today. So I'm going to go... Uh, work in my garden and also if you guys can just say a, a quick prayer for my auntie she's in the hospital so I'm actually gonna go see her after this but say a, a quick prayer for my, my aunt Mamie who's in the hospital uh, she'd appreciate it and uh, we'll kind of meet up again thank you guys I really appreciate all of you all who've come and listen and join me with this book launch it means a lot to me uh, hopefully you can download this book and get some good knowledge from it and um, we kind of go from there. Alright guys, see you later. Dr. Dawn signing off.